Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And I can speak again. It's a miracle, ladies and gentlemen. And this is our thoughts on Gravity Falls, Season 1, Episodes 16 through 20. So, what did you think of Season 1's season finale? That was redundant. Yes, yes it was. And interesting nitpicks, definitely nitpicks despite the application of cartoon logic. But once again, later episodes completely wiped earlier episodes from my memory. I completely forgot that the sleepover episode with the magic exchange body carpet was in the set of five. Fun episode too. They do a good job of avoiding tropes while still using tropes in this show. Mm -hmm. Specifically in the resolution of the situations. In other words, they have a tendency to end things differently than the trope usually leads to. Yes, that really stood out for me in the Summer Ween episode. So do you remember any more about the sleepover episode? Other than the fun at the end with all the, oh, I'm in whose body now? Yes, random body switching. But no, I remember a lot about the episode because poor Dipper, no boy wants to be in the room while the girls are having a sleepover. Dipper didn't need his own room, he just needed a place to stay while the girl invasion was happening. Because neither of them really wanted a separate room. And Seuss finally got his own room at the end there. Yes, he finally got an actual break room, instead of that tiny little closet where he burned himself on equipment constantly. Ow. 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 <laughs> oh, actually that one was kind of nice. Ah, <laughs> uh, Seuss. The switch between Dipper and Mabel was... Interesting, and of course that was the focus. But the switch between Seuss and Waddles. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Apparently Waddles is quite the ladies' man. Apparently. Also excellent negotiator. Because that is the first time we see Waddles win against Stan. We see it happen again in the dinosaur episode. Hmm. That piercing gaze. Because Stan was trying to push him out to have the dinosaur take him, and then nope. Gonna buckle him in and punch the dinosaur. Seuss was also voted in that episode. And it was another trope breaker because usually the stupid person ends up, their stupidity solves the problem. No, he, he his actual intelligence solved the problem. Yes, as we don't often get to see Seuss's intelligence. Mm -hmm. And here it was clearly displayed that he does have intelligence and is capable of using it. He's just... Apparently not one into using it. I guess he just has more fun. If you look at him, he doesn't really have much of a worry in the world. Except for maybe trying to date girls. Yeah, doesn't seem to have much experience with that. And it's a bad sign when Models is doing better than you in that department. Mm-hmm. You're just not the same man I fell in love with. Um, can we just go back to that kissing? <laughs> Was, that was really nice. Also, could you kind of catch me up here? I kind of spent most of the day of the pig. <laughs> oh, also old man McGucket. Yeah. Like, the pig is talking. You're going to eat it. Zeus is now back in his own body, and you're still threatening to eat him. Uh, so is that all for that episode, or did it bring up questions and stuff for you? Oh, we're jumping around a little bit. But yeah, it's like, so what happened to that carpet when Stan went to get rid of it? Because I don't think we've seen the last of it. Once again, keeping my lip I almost said limbs. Keeping my lips shut. Also, maybe because I can't remember. I don't think we've seen the last of it. And I think the switch was kind of one-sided between Mabel and Dipper. I think Mabel got a better understanding of Dipper than Dipper did of Mabel. Mm -hmm. I feel so sorry for Mabel. That stuff's even harsh for a male perspective. Yeah, but girls tend to mature faster than boys, so she probably would have already gotten the female version of that talk from their parents. Because, hmm. you know, they're 12 now. When I was in school, the girls got that bit of education back in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. But not from Grunkle Stan. No, no, that's incredibly disturbing. But she's already seen Grunkle Stan without pants, so... Mm -hmm. But without boxers? The only two I can think of that that, that happened to was those poor kids in the Summerween episode. Deserved it. <sighs> Still though. <laughs> Deserved it. Ah, uh, so please continue. <laughs> well, jumping back into the episode that was in between those two with the boy band. 
the literally manufactured boy band. Were several near the end of the boy band era literally manufactured? Yes. Kind of like the monkeys? Mm-hmm. Like O-Town? Mm-hmm. But still, I love how, you know, Dipper is joking about them being manufactured. And then, oh, no, they're literally manufactured. And they're treated like giant hamsters. Yes. The one thing I don't entirely get is why the producer was so set on getting that particular set back. Because he was saying, I've got your replacement right there. Yeah, you can. we can just replace you. So maybe Why not just do it yeah. or is that just a hollow threat no i don't think it was a hollow threat i think what it is is it takes time to manufacture more and he didn't have a full set ready so he could have replaced a member but he couldn't replace the whole band yep and there's probably also training and well yeah training not as in training for stuff but as training for actually potty training paper training <laughs> All that stuff. Also teaching them to act just like the ones that are being replaced. Mm -hmm. At least on stage, because in private, it doesn't matter. But going back to how you were saying they changed the tropes, I was all set for the boy band to actually be hypnotizing the girls. But instead, no, that's Robbie. Yeah, though the real question is, was he actually hypnotizing her? It did have a backwards message in it, but did it was it actually working on her? It seemed like it was. They played it out like it was in the beginning. But if that was the case, when she heard it again when Dipper played it, she should have been resusceptible to it. Because she said that what she was upset about was that Robbie lied to her. About the song not being from him. Yes. That's what she was angry about. Mm -hmm. In fact, the song wasn't from him, and she thought it was sweet that he made something for her. But then finding out that it actually wasn't made by him is what upset her, not the fact that he was trying to use mind control. Which He wasn't trying to use mind control. He just happened to be using it, and it may or may not have worked. Bad choice in words, Dipper. Yeah, so what would have been the correct thing to say, Dipper, and any other guys who may be listening, go, you know, Wendy, I'm really sorry. Can my Uncle Stan and I give you a ride home? Not, hey, since your evening is freed up, do you want to go bowling? Yeah, that's like, I'm begging for seconds. I want the scraps, please. Can I have the scraps? I'm going to go get with the scraps. I'll be your, uh, what's the term? Rebound? Rebound. <laughs> Sounds like a boy band song. I'll be your rebound. I'm not going to sing. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, there's a Rascal Flatts song called Payback. Mm. Uh, I'll be your payback, take you on the dance floor, I'll lean you way back. <laughs> <laughs> so it was nice that they were carrying two storylines along simultaneously, one with Dipper, one with Mabel. Also nice that they were exploring both music trope aspects, the manufactured one and the mind control one. Mm. Yeah, especially since there was that whole rumor that, of course, is fake about that Beatles song. I believe it's Paul is Dead? That if you play one of the songs backwards, it says Paul is Dead? Something like that. And also the whole rumor the walrus was Paul. Mm. Which I believe actually goes back to the Magical Mystery Tour. Can't say anything more because Lux hasn't watched it yet. Yes, I haven't seen that movie. But shall we go back to the show? Let's. Punching Dinosaurs. Quite. I love that what he ends up doing is basically what he lied to Mabel and said he did. I love how they used slow motion. Pretty much. Also, I love how ridiculous the infomercials are in this series. Mm -hmm. You need Owl Troll! <laughs> ah, this baby carrier. But I know what you're thinking. Does it work on pigs? Yes, it works on pigs! Pigs, 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 it works on pigs! Uh, such a great show this is. Quite. The mystery, the comedy, the good writing, the good voice acting. It all comes together in a wonderful package known as Gravity Falls. And then you get to the finale and, oh my god, there's Bill Cipher. Not that we hadn't been seeing him, but now he's officially introduced. Mm-hmm. Creepy guy. Oh, you haven't seen the half of it. I'm sure I haven't, because he and Stan apparently have a past. Also, I made Lux pause on 
the page showing him in Gideon's book because I wanted to see the creature number. It's creature number 326. Why does that sound familiar? I'm pretty sure I heard creature 326 somewhere before. Maybe when the show was airing. Possibly. But I have a feeling that number may have some other significance outside of the show. And it may be a reference to something outside of the show. I'm going to look that up later. It could be, but I was trying to remember some stuff from uh, geometry class. Hmm. As I want to say it can all be tied back to triangles. Three hmm. types of triangles. Triangles have two right angles and then something with the six. Hmm. Because, you know me, I had some interesting math teachers in high school. Hmm. And we had one that went over, like, how to get triple six out of a pentagon, so. Hmm. That also reminds me how there was a big rumor about how all barcodes had triple six in them. They don't. When you look at a barcode and you, you see that row of numbers below it, that's what's in the barcode. Yeah, pretty much. The barcodes can also contain letters. Yes. I know this because I did a lot of research into barcodes because I got really fascinated with the history of QR codes, which are an advanced type of what they call 2D barcode. I know that sounds weird considering all barcodes are 2D, but what they mean by that is it doesn't just contain information one direction. It contains information of both directions, up and down, left and right. Sorry, I'm a bit of a geek. I think they know that by now. Just because I do all the editing and the video editing and the posting and doing the research on YouTube and... Um, please continue. <laughs> so it was a nice touch that Mabel's movie was actually on cassette. Hmm. Not DVD. Old-fashioned VHS, which helped mark its time. Also, I love that synth music is... It's apparently Bill Cipher's weakness. Apparently. Well, one of them anyways. Yes. So I was getting struck in the face by kittens. <sighs> Kitten punches. Also, that reminded me of Steven Universe. That episode. Yes, with the cat fingers. Mm -hmm. Perfect demonstration of how morphing powers could go absolutely horribly wrong. Quite. I should actually say shape-shifting powers since I just remembered the word. Mm-hmm. But there are questions for the whole Bill Cipher episode, other than the what's the history with him and Stan and what are the limits of his powers and where did he go when he decided to leave? We have the important question of, was he really disguised as Seuss the whole time? Because Seuss was the one who made the reference to the arrest warrants, which gave Mabel the clue she needed to look and find the correct memory. Because if Bill knows everything already, did he really need to get the memory? Shouldn't he have just known it? Because he knew what they were all thinking. He knew what their nightmares were. He had a very interesting way of identifying the three. Pine tree, question mark, and shooting star. Do you know what that refers to? It's their clothing. Dipper has the pine tree on his hat. Seuss always wears the question mark and Mabel's sweaters usually have a shooting star. It's only had a shooting star once. She always has something on her shirts, but it's only been a shooting star once so far. The one for Mabel made the least sense to me. I'm like, okay, on her sweater, but is that really her identifying characteristic? Could I, be. Yeah, and it could be a reference to something more, which of course Lux isn't saying, because... Yeah. We haven't started season two yet. Yeah, because I do remember good portions of it, just not information on certain things, like little clues and stuff like that. Also, I love how they fight back once Dipper gives them the clue. I mean, Zeus basically turns himself into a Care Bear. And Dipper's got the whole glowing aura, being able to fly thing going on. And Mabel works as a summoner and calls back her dreamy rock boys. Also, the um, the hamster ball comes back. Yes. Nice design for a shield. Mm-hmm. You also have to wonder just what exactly Gideon agreed to in his non-specific helping Bill with the little project afterwards. Because Bill was really upset that the deal got called off. Mm. Because he was like, do you know what you just cost me? Mm. So apparently Gideon's assistance would have been a huge help. And you have to wonder what Gideon could have provided to someone like Bill Cipher. Hmm. And that warning at the end from Bill, combine that with the 
actual finale of Stan with all three journals. Hmm. Because I'm sorry, that map that you get when you put all three journals together still kind of has a triangle thing going. Which makes me nervous because Bill's kind of a triangle thing. And I would like to point out the design for Gideon Land. Gideon's head spins. That's like something out of The Exorcist. <laughs> yeah, but it's also classic for that type of giant thing. Head spinning. Don't ask me why. I'm just saying. <laughs> but they also made it such a Disney ripoff using the font. And that's so fun because it's a Disney show. Mm -hmm. Disney original. Yes. If only they do more like that. Yep. And I can't wait for an original that's coming back. <laughs> DuckTales. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Tales of daring do. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not pony tales or cotton tales, but duck tales. Damn Ooh. it, Lux! <laughs> <laughs> uh, we could actually recite the entire theme song for you, but we're not going to do it because you know how easily it gets stuck in one's head. Mm. I wish they would do another show. Actually, I, I wish they would do that entire Saturday morning lineup. Duck Tales, which they're doing, which is awesome. Also, Tailspin, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, Darkwing Duck. I think I'm missing one, but those guys. And to go to the cartoon logic of the finale. Okay, Gideon caused, let's see, we have trespassing, property damage, and theft for Gideon to have the deed. Even taking into account cartoon logic, because Cartoon Logic says whoever physically has possession of the deed is the owner, which is not how it works. Even if we take that Cartoon Logic of that's how it works, that only applies to the property, the physical property, which would either be the land and or the house, depending on how the original deed was written, and would not include all of their personal possessions. We see that Mabel got her sweaters, but there is no possible way that that could have included waddles. Even if every object in the shack is somehow lumped into that deed by cartoon logic, waddles does not belong to Stan. Waddles belongs to Mabel. So one, Gideon should not have been able to do that. And two, as Mabel's pet, Gideon should value waddles because... It's important to Mabel, whom he's still crushing on, and could be used as a bargaining chip to get her, I can't say back, because a little brat never had her. Mm -hmm. Because Stan shouldn't have been totally broke, because he should have been able to get that big duffel bag of cash. Mm -hmm. That's another thing, like, even if he doesn't have the big duffel bag of cash from the cabin, I'm pretty sure he would have hid bags of cash somewhere else. That he would have had access to. And he had to have some cash because how will Stay get the bus tickets? Mm -hmm. Also, why is Zeus having to work that many part-time jobs to replace his income from the mystery shack? Stan, except for the raise that Waddles got him, Stan had to have paid Zeus like nothing. So why is Zeus working at least three part-time jobs? And I love how they snuck in bus driver in that first set of the jobs he was giving out. I was like, I didn't catch that before. Yeah, I was like, oh, bus driver. I didn't think about him being the driver of the bus the kids were on because that bus leaves Gravity Falls. I was thinking school bus driver, mm. which is kind of awkward because it's summer, but, you know, summer school. Mm -hmm. The entire giant robot thing. I love how Gideon was in that suit. Apparently Gideon is drift compatible. <laughs> well, I was thinking more... Ah, uh, what was the name of the Gundam series? G Gundam? Yeah, that one. Yep. Shining Finger! Still sounds wrong. Yep. And I love the whole when Dipper is actually making Gideon punch himself, and so the robot is punching itself. Mm hmm. And you would think they would have been a smidge more careful because the robot had Mabel in its fist. Gideon, you're throwing punches around your, you know, supposed queen. Why does everyone want to make Mabel their queen? I don't know. Better than being a princess. Yeah. Unless you're Disney. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's the thing. But it is Disney. Yeah. Nice. Didn't catch that before, but that's so cool because everyone wants to make her their queen. But in Disneyland, 
I mean, in the Disney universes, queens are usually evil. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. Continue. <laughs> and the grappling hook finally comes in handy. Mm -hmm. First time ever. Well, she didn't use it in the other episode until this one. She used it in the episode where she got it. She broke the lamp putting it out. Yes, but I mean after she got it. I know, because I complained about the fact that we never saw it. And then she used it to break the jelly jar. Mm -hmm. I'm going to vacuum the walls now. Yes. This is Abuelito's very nice to let all of them stay there. <laughs> I'm going to vacuum my face now. <laughs> yes. Yes. That is, that, that is the perfect reaction to being kissed by Stan. <laughs> I go vacuum my face now. <laughs> <laughs> you do it so much better than me. Uh, voice talents of Ember can be... <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> voice talents of Ember can be enjoyed in her own show, Ember's Reading Room. Check your local stations for times. <laughs> <laughs> or just look for the playlist. That too. <laughs> so on to the big reveal. Reveal? <laughs> Which one? Where we prove Gideon's a fraud or that not only did Stan know about the journals, he had journal number one? That's going with the Gideon reveal because I actually had issues with, um, why does he have a portable center in one of the legs? Where, where did he have this video center before? And why did he move it into one of the legs or well, arms? Is it, tell. is it just an additional feed? Hmm. Could be a secondary one now that you point that out, yeah. I figured it was a secondary feed because in order to operate the robot safely, he would still need to know what's going on throughout the town so that he doesn't do anything with the robot that interferes with the persona that he has projected to the residents of Gravity Falls. Mm -hmm. Also, it um, it um. Yeah. Didn't really click with me that no fights occur unless... Tyler eggs them on, but it does explain why he was at the boy band concert because the girls broke out in fights and he was going, Get her! Get her! <laughs> so it was just like, Wow. Now, the real question is, why did Stan know to kick right there to reveal the center? Other than the obvious animation shortcut of, Look at this area, it's highlighted, it's going to be animated. Tap, see, it animated. <laughs> That would actually be a good thing to know if you ever get trapped in an animated series. Like, okay, what part of this will move? Oh, this looks completely different than everything else. Push. Yep, just as I thought. Yes, if you could be Deadpool style aware of that, it would be awesome. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I love the first movie. Can't wait for the second one. The ad for the second one is awesome. So far away. I hear it's coming out in 2018. It's not that far away. Yeah, but it's 2018. I know it's only a year away or less, but we're just going to go. We haven't finished watching the movies that came out last year that we need to see. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. And I'm pretty sure it comments below, watch the MLP movies. We want to hear her being tortured. Yeah. Uh, m maybe we'll tie that to something like uh, X number of subscribers or X number of clicks on links. <laughs> Or enough money for us to buy a Nintendo Switch with a copy of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild? Yeah, like that's gonna happen. <laughs> I would love that. God, I have to keep avoiding parts of the internet because of that dang game. <laughs> I want to play it so badly. And yes, I just did the whole thing. The thing where you stand and you move your legs back. Yeah, I just did that. Yeah, y you might want to edit that part out. Also, just break open the pen to show that it's a camera. That should have been enough. That actually could have. Yeah, that would have worked. Though they could have also said, without the proof in one of Gideon's actual things that Stan didn't have time to tamper with. Well, all he would have had to do was take somebody else's pen off of them and break it and go, see, it's the same. Mm -hmm. But seeing all of them on feed mm -hmm. gives just that much more. So the other question is, why were those all old feeds? Yeah. Because the things point. that we saw footage of were things that were referenced back in the beginning of when they're going over all the things that he said that they said proved he was psychic. Like the secret to my coffee omelet is coffee! 
Yeah, Susan, you can't put the secret ingredient in the title. Yeah, also, I don't know. Would a coffee omelet actually work? It would work. I mean, you could put coffee into an omelet. That's not the way I would have done. I would have poured it into the egg mixture. But I'm not sure how it would taste. I haven't really cooked with coffee. I know mm. it can be done. Mm. Okay, moving on from that. Moving on from that. Off to the side question. <laughs> yes. What I want to know is how Dipper got book number three back. Because when Stan picks up and shakes Gideon, I only remember seeing one book drop, and it's the second book, which he hides behind the deed. Book number three falls on the ground, and he discovers it underneath a piece of metal. Okay. He goes, oh, my book! And he sticks it back in his vest. Okay, I actually couldn't remember where he got it back, because I was so focused on when Stan shakes Gideon and manages to snag book number two by hiding it behind the deed. Mm -hmm. He basically, going back to Dipper, he basically finds it almost immediately after he says that the grappling hook is finally useful. Oh, that's right. And he goes, oh, hey, my journal. Thank you. See what I mean about stuff on the show wiping other things from your brain? Hmm. Because we talked about, hey, the grappling hook was finally useful. Mm hmm But, wow, all three journals. What insanity is Stan about to unleash? Because Bill warned... Dipper and Mabel and Seuss. Mm -hmm. But the question is, was Stan what Bill was warning about, or was it something else? Mm -hmm. Because Bill is definitely not on their side. Stan is probably on their side, but we don't know what Stan's after or what Stan's motives are. Because good villains always have good reasons for what they do, and are often not villains in their own minds. And a lot is done in the name of love and family. So, with that in mind... What do you think of this series so far? I am very much enjoying it. I'm glad that we're finally doing this recording so that we can move forward with watching more. So, shall we close things up? I'm really glad I'm getting this chance to watch these episodes again with Ember. Because it's so fun watching her reactions and what she laughs to. I'm like, she's laughing to that? That's cool. I didn't think she'd actually find that funny. Awesome. Uh, and I can't wait to watch season two. It doesn't feel like there was only two seasons of this series. It's because they cram a lot into a small amount of space. It's like when you watch Steven Universe, you watch just a little bit, and then you think back of everything that happened and went, huh. Yeah, especially when, considering most of the episodes are like 15 minutes long, maybe shorter, 12. I think they're actually 15 minutes on TV, but that's with commercials. So without commercials, they're like 12. Yeah, so each actual episode in a traditional half hour cartoon show is actually two individual episodes mm -hmm. this has been our thoughts on gravity falls season one episode 16 through 20 thank you for listening if you enjoyed this please subscribe leave a friendly comment share this with your friends or frenemies and check out other videos on our channel we have playlists playlists are nice right if you'd like to check out more of Lux's art, you can find him on DeviantArt, Tumblr, and Twitter. If you would like to support this channel financially, please check out our Patreon and Ko-fi links.